I just... I don't understand. This is not a dream. It's a memory. That room. That kitchen. Why did I forget this? Is there... more I forgot? Cause now that I think of it... But it doesn't make any sense. Cause everything I remember... All the memories that I have... It just... doesn't fit in. Cause... The first thing I remember... From the moment I opened my eyes was... This forest. So it had to happen before, but... Wouldn't that mean that... I... Forgot my entire life? Wait... I feel so dizzy. Wait, what, what was I doing here? Um, the plate. Yeah, I had dinner and... Right, I was <laughs> about to start working on my next project. It's finally time to name my horsey. Hello, Mocha. Now, the thing is, I could really use some enchantments for my tools, because it would definitely help me big time with gathering resources. But for that, I'm going to need a lot of leather. So, let's get to it. So actually in the meantime I also started breeding sheep and gathering a little bit of wool here and there because it might come in handy later down the line, you never know. And as it got dark I thought it's a good idea to start lighting this whole area up by hiding some torches underneath the moss carpets. And this took me some time but this should be the last one. Perfect! Another beautiful day. You know what? Sleeping in the barn is actually kind of cozy. I think I'm gonna do that more often. Alright, I've been farming cows all night and I finally have enough leather for the level 30 enchanting setup. So now all that's left is grabbing some sugarcane. But first, let's say goodnight to Mocha and let's pop by the storage real quick. Because as you can see, I have finally sorted everything up. So let's put this leather in here. And just look at this. Look, so beautiful. Alright, Raffles, we've got a long day ahead of us. First, I'm going to get rid of this because I have much bigger plans for my sugarcane farm. I still want to keep my palette cohesive, so I'm going to need a bunch of dark oak wood. But there is also one specific block that I'm gonna need for some texturing and it's this one. The rooted dirt. The problem is in the gathering process though. It takes a really long time. So I thought maybe if I go and look for some lush caves, maybe that will be quicker because you never know. Maybe I'll be able to find some azalea trees and they usually spawn with a bunch of rooted dirt underneath them. So I think it's worth a shot. Okay, I think 
this is, yeah, it looks like a lush cave. Yep, no signs of rooted dirt anywhere. But look who I found instead. Yeah, the idea wasn't bad, but I got no luck. So I guess that means I gotta go with plan A again. Okay, this is going to take a long time, but I came prepared. I got some bone meal and a lot of motivation. So after a whole day of chopping down azalea trees, I managed to get 29 blocks of rooted dirt and I hope it's enough. Now, where was the dirt chest? I think it was here. Yeah, I think I should label them. It's gonna be way easier this way. And I don't have a designated row for the rooted dirt just yet. So maybe let's just put it here to keep it safe. And I'll just take care of it later. Or I'll take care of it now. But first, let me just... Yeah. Bad luck, bad day. What should I do? to go for a little trip to gather some more materials so maybe a brush could come in handy but looks like I'm missing a feather. Also before I go I want to place more lightning rods just in case. After the storage blow up I'm not gonna take any chances okay? And there's our brush. Now where should I place it? Maybe somewhere... Oh I keep forgetting about fixing these planters. So much better so let's maybe put it somewhere here yeah i also want to protect my little orchard so let's put one here and last but not least i would hate to rebuild this roof if something happened and perfect so now let's go home let's get some sleep and we're going to head out first thing in the morning so the plan is fairly simple i need to locate some of the warmer biomes to get some of that gorgeous red sand and if i remember correctly there was a savanna biome somewhere in that direction oh but first i'm actually gonna grab these flowers real quick and that's because i can turn lilac into a magenta dye that i'm gonna need for some stained glass all right and now we are ready to go Okay, this is definitely a savanna biome, which is great. That means we're going in the right direction. So I spent the night in this village and apparently there's our mesa biome. Oh my, will you look at that? This looks absolutely stunning. I actually haven't mentioned why I need the red sand and that's because for the roof of my sugarcane farm I'm gonna use some red sandstone bricks. So yeah, let's dig this all up. Okay, so we've got company. And now I wonder if Raffles kills them, will I still get the bedomen? I will. Okay, good to know. So it's getting dark and I've got this awesome idea. First, let me climb up that hill and see if I'll be able to catch the sunset. And I think we are right on time. Oh, this looks so beautiful. So I wanted to spend some cozy time with Raffles and I thought a little campfire and stargazing would do the thing. So let's set it up and let's watch the night sky. You're five feet off the ground You rest on my shoulder the stars convey the light So fragile in the night In this moment In this moment Forever be Forever be Ah, oh, this is gonna be such a beautiful memory But the sun is starting to rise So it's time to go Forever be Forever be Whoa. I mean, can you imagine waking up to this view every single day? You know what, Raffles? I think this whole mesa biome is kind of growing on me. All right, back to work. I still need to pick some things up, like terracotta and some cacti. Now just let me unpack real quick, and hopefully this time nothing is gonna blow up in my face. Yeah, let's put it all in here. Okay, I know I said back to work and all, but there's this one side project that I really wanted to do for the longest time, so... Okay, now let's check if this is big enough. Mm, I think I need more space. And I made it bigger. Added some paths, connected it nicely. And now I think I'm just gonna take a shovel or two and replace the grass with some more path blocks. And 
I did go a little bit overboard, but let me show you around. I was old, I was young. So as you can see, I went ahead and decorated this paddock to look more cottagecore, added trees, azalea leaves, lanterns, and I'm super happy with the result. I think what really made this area more unique are the trees. Now it looks a lot more cozy and I love this little pond that I made over here. But I made sure that some of the focal points I wanted to keep were still there. I also placed the sign on the gate, but I don't have any idea for the name for this area just yet, so I'm keeping it blank for now. I wanted this paddock to be a little training area where I could practice some jumps, but also check on different abilities of my new horses. So I built this jumping fence that can be adjusted once I start clearing the easier jumps. I also planted a lot of rose and berry bushes and mixed them with some spruce leaves to really make them pop. And this is my favorite part. I really wanted to make a little passage underneath the tree branches and it turned out so amazing, separating the animal district from my house and the stables. And last but not least, I gathered a lot of different types of flowers and grouped them together with some grass and jungle fences and I think it really tied it all together. I also added a ton of roses to the orchard chart and the stables and I think I should use flowers more often in general. Okay, I think it's time to finally test out the paddock, so I'm going to take Mocha and let's try a few jumps. And the road signs keep changing as the road stretches out ahead. That was great! Mocha is actually quite a jumper, so next time I think I'm gonna build one more fence. And it's starting to rain. So I think it's time to finish our training session for today and just take a look at this place now. It's so beautiful when it rains. Okay, I was busy and I am happy to announce that we have some new residents in the stables. So everybody, meet Bojack, Bojack the horse. <laughs> I trained him just a little bit and it turned out he is an amazing jumper and he's also very fast, so he definitely has to stay. But he is not the only one who's new because right over here we have a beautiful black horse and his name is going to be Tony. And Tony has also earned his place in here, so I am super excited to read them later on and see what we're gonna get. But for now, we have much more important work to do. It's finally time to use my diamonds and craft a diamond pickaxe. And turns out I had an extra name tag I forgot about, so let me just name Bojack real quick and we're back at it. So there's this lava lake that I really wanted to get rid of because that's exactly where I want my sugarcane farm to be. And why not get some obsidian while we're at it? But if I turned everything into obsidian, that would take me ages to mine, so I decided to separate it into smaller sections. And I think it kinda worked! Perfect! Okay, so now I need to get rid of all this lava underneath so that it doesn't burn whatever I'm gonna build. And I think I didn't miss any spots, so that's great. So now I'm gonna clean this all up and prepare some materials. And actually the thing that I'm going to build is not gonna be just a regular sugarcane farm, but more of a water wheel powered paper factory, which I'm super excited about. So let me just do some more preparations, some terraforming, and after I get some sleep... Uh, Hmm, why? Why is my bed occupied? That's kind of weird. Anyway, I made this temporary bridge so that I can cross this river with Mocha and move the resources more efficiently. And after the stained glass, the next thing I'm gonna need is some more spruce wood. And look at the view from this treetop, so pretty. Next, I'm definitely gonna need some grindstones, some stone bricks and cracked stone bricks. And I'm gonna get some more diorite just to be on the safer side. And in the meantime, I found another geode. And now I've got everything, so let's get to it. And I'd stop thinking of this over. Okay, the base structure is done, so now I'm gonna fill the windows. Great! And now it's time to add some more details. Okay, so this is how it looks like inside so far. We've got two rooms, and over here I'm gonna build the sugarcane farm. But first, it's time for the water wheel. Follow your heart What do you 
say. All right, the main entrance is looking presentable, although I'm gonna need some more terraforming in here. However, I did make huge progress on the front of the factory. So as you can see, we've got the water wheel. I added some greenery and texturized everything. I also built this little bridge with some campfires, some spruce trap doors. Maybe it's not the widest bridge in the world, but it is functional and even horse friendly. So next step is naturally finishing the interior of my little paper factory and of course building the sugarcane farm. For that, I'm gonna need just one last thing, which is gonna require me to use up my last diamond and make a shovel with a silk touch enchantment on it. And this time I decided to go on this trip with Mocha and we found the woodland mansion and this cool crater. But more importantly, we found the snowy biomes. And well, what I need for the farm is actually some packed ice. And soon enough, you're gonna understand why. But for now, I kinda want it to be a surprise. I managed to get 27 blocks of ice, which should give me three blocks of packed ice. And I just hope it's gonna be enough. Okay, it's finally time, so first let me switch up this grass for some actual flooring. And there we go. So now that that's finished, I can start working on the farm. I'm just gonna place some torches, and I'm going to start by digging up three rows. The ones on the side are going to be filled with water, and the one in the middle is where the sugar cane is going to go. And now just for the sake of aesthetics, I'm going to replace grass with moss. The redstone contraption is all done and connected to this little button over here with two two rows of redstone dust that activate the pistons. And now I can plant some sugar cane and wait for it to grow while I finish the interior. And it is done. <laughs> I am so happy with the result and I'm so excited for this little tour, so let's get started. And I don't want to spoil too much, so let me just get to the sugarcane section first. And here it is. So the main idea was that here's where the fresh pulp is drying after being placed in these frames to keep its shape. And on the other side, the paper is almost ready. I also built these drying racks where I used birch signs as hanging sheets of paper and this is where the paper is left to dry and ready to be collected. On the ceiling, I built some pipes and ventilation using iron trapdoors, but I balanced it out with some greenery. And the sugar cane is ready as you can see. I did build one more floor underneath it, but it's not connected to the main circuit. I thought I'm just going to leave it for now and finish it once I get my hands on some quartz. And now let's push the button and collect the sugar cane. Although there are always going to be some losses with this design, it doesn't really matter to me that much. And here's the main attraction, the paper machine. So the paper comes out from this side and is then being stretched out into these sheets on this big roller. I also added some small details like these power cords made from lightning rods and I connected the water wheel to the whole contraption using some grindstones, which from the side look a lot like gears. And this sugar cane that I just collected is now going up in this water pipe and it's going to travel all the way over here until it drops down this little drain. And that's how it all ends up in a little hopper down below. Now to keep the machines look as industrial as possible, I used blast furnaces and regular furnaces. And I also decorated the pipe with some double dark oak slabs, which give the nailed down wood look. And if I go through this employee only back door, I now have access to this whole contraption in case something ever happens or requires any maintenance. Now the question is, where did the sugar cane go? And the answer is going to be right here. I have to go down this ladder and if we go around here, this is where my storage is. I keep these open for now because after I get some soul sand, I'll be able to make the bubble elevator, which will speed this whole thing up. But yeah, here's the sugar cane. And once the farm is automatic, I'm gonna have to extend this a little bit, but it works for now. So this is the interior. And now let me show you what I did outside. So the main thing that's changed is that I added a lot more leaves, glowberry vines and lily pads and these details really made the build a lot more cottage core, which I love. I replaced sand with moss, coarse dirt and pots all. After finally getting that silk touch shovel, I went all in with the plants, added ferns, tall grass and even these tree leaves from the lush cave. But my favorite thing is gonna be this cattail design with a bamboo fence and a brown candle on top of it. I think it just looks so 
beautiful and complements the lake so nicely. So yeah, this is the paper factory and I'm super happy with how it turned out. Now, in order to make this farm automatic, I'm gonna need some quartz from the nether. So I think it's time I got a little upgrade on my armor. And because I used up all of my diamonds today, I'm gonna have to mine some more. Don't rely on others to get you through the maze. The dreams are not the same for me. Standing by the shore. Wait. Is that me? Oh, 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 oh,